Hey everyone, it's Abby. Last time we left off having made the bodice, attached the neckline, and the skirt is ready to be attached to my cotton floral regency dress that I've been making for the CauseTube hashtag relaxed regency sew along. See the first part of this series for the patterns I used and the beginning of this dress. So let's get sewing! I'm hand under stitching the neckline so it will lay flatter. I'm using a running back stitch and a single thread. I hand gather the skirt at the back, making sure my stitches are at the half inch mark. I'm marking the center of the skirt and the bodice, and then the two sides, so I know where to place the skirt. I then gather and pin the back of the skirt. I anchor the hand gathers when I have it where it needs to be. I use doubled thread and a sturdy hand back stitch to attach the skirt to the bodice. I add two lines of machine gathers to the top of the sleeve between the marks and to the bottom of the sleeve. I machine sewed the piping cuff together as well. Then I machine sew the sleeve sides together. I poke a hole so I can push the tapestry needle through the piping channel. It pops out the other side. I hand fell the edges down. The long sleeve was too big, so I pinned where all the edits are and tried it on with the pins in. This is an easy way to bring my sleeves in without having to create a mock-up first. I machine sew the sleeve seams at this point, following the pins I had placed. I clip, fold over, and hand fell the puff sleeve seam in place. I gather the cuff and pin it to the piping. In order to cover the raw edges of the sleeve cuff, I cut two of the bits to one quarter inch. Then I fold under and wrap the outside seam piece around all the raw edges and pin in place, having the piping show at the edge with the raw edges wrapped to the inside of the cuff area. I trim the long sleeve seams first, then I trim one edge, I fingernail press the seam and fold under the raw edges to pin and hand fell all the seams in place. I mark the cuff to add piping. I hand felled all the long sleeve seams and then set in the piping the same way I did to the puff sleeve. I gather and pin the puffed sleeve in place. I 
I machine sew the puffed sleeve onto the bodice. For sleeves, the easiest way to have fewer problems is to machine sew from the inside. I sewed a second line of stitching about a quarter inch from the first, and then I run a zigzag stitch. This stabilizes the whole sleeve area. I machine sewed a basting stitch to the top of the armhole about a quarter inch in for the detachable long sleeve. This will give me a measure to iron to for hemming. I do the same for the hem of the skirt. The basting line is at a half inch this time. It's much easier than just guessing. I press a quarter inch in on the top of the long sleeve hem. Then I fold that over and press again to enclose the raw edges. I trim the seam up to the second stitching line and press using the tailor's hail, pressing the seam toward the bodice. I also press the waist seam up toward the bodice. And finally, I press the hem up a half inch and then a half inch again, making the hem one inch total. It's time to attach the lining in order to enclose all the raw edges. I pin the waist and sleeve lining in place. I also pin the long sleeve hem. I hand whip stitch the lining in place. The hem is similar. Pin in place and hand whip stitch, making my stitches as small as possible on the outside. I hand whip stitch the armhole lining in. It's a little trickier, but very similar to the rest I've been doing. Finally, I whip stitch the long sleeve hem. I'm using a covered buttons kit from Joann's. I mark the circles with pencil and cut them from a scrap of fabric. I place the circles in the tool and press the button into it. Then I push the backing piece in place using the tools provided. I marked the button and buttonhole placement with pins. There are six. Then I start a buttonhole with a seam ripper and cut it with scissors to the right size. I use buttonhole thread, which is thicker, doubled up, to hand sew each buttonhole. I use the same thick thread to attach the button on the other side, securing it well. Detachable long sleeves were usually basted in back in the Regency era. I find this not very convenient if I want to take them out and put them in a lot, but this first time, I'm going to try it their way. I pin the sleeve in place and use a green thread and a hand basting stitch to attach the sleeves to the inside of the puff sleeve right at the armhole. I realized there was extra fabric at the top, so I took this moment to add some pleats that I permanently sewed in place, so I wouldn't have to do it again.
I made a mask from the scraps. See my monarch butterfly mask for the pattern. I pin the mask pieces right sides to right sides. I machine sew one quarter inch from the edge. I press the two mask pieces open using a tailor's hand. I cut two 8 inch pieces of 1 8 inch wide elastic. Then I create the nose wire piece by doubling up floral wire. I hand sew the wire close to the edge at the top. Diana apparently wants to help. I pin the elastic to each corner of the right side of the fabric, then I pin right sides to right sides all around. I use the sewing machine to sew one quarter inch from the edge, leaving a couple inches at the bottom for turning. I reinforce each elastic with back and forth stitching. Then I flip it right side out and what I call finger press the edges and pin in place. I then run a stitch around the entire edge twice, as close to the edge as I can get. And there we go, I have a matching mask. And that's it. I've completed my cotton floral regency dress. Time to go walking with a book and get three inches of mud on my hem. This is a china teacup and saucer that is from my family. I think probably my great-grandmothers or maybe even my great-great-grandmothers. So it is lilies of the valley. I usually keep my jewelry in this, so yeah. I thought it'd be really fun at the uh, completion of making this Regency dress to just use one of my antique uh, tea sets to have tea today. I'm happy it didn't break when I poured hot tea in it. There is that! So I've really had fun with this Regency Sew Along project. I created a fichu to go along with my ensemble that I'll have a video for in the future. I want to add embroidery to it eventually, but it's very serviceable as it is right now. And you never know, I may take years to add the embroidery, so at least I have it to wear now. Look for a Getting Ready Regency style to see all the layers in this outfit, as well as how to do a simple Regency hairstyle and Regency makeup. I have many Regency and Edwardian project plans in the future. If you liked this video and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below. Thank you for coming on this Regency sewing journey. Happy sewing! Oh, who's there? Come on in, Tweety. Come on. Yes. Okay. Okay. You sit here. Oh, I see the dogs. I see the So good girl. So let's get sewing. Hello. Oh.
Oh, my God.